Okay, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it. We already get some territory in the Middle East. And that's it. We can spread our influence in the Middle East. Uh, what's that? Wait a minute, those are barbarians! Barbarians! Ah! Ah! Hey, hey, guys! Oh my god! Your poop! Please, help me! Help me! Ah! The world is full of things that happen in, the, in every inch of its place. And some are things that can be remembered for millennia. For example, the Crusades, the conquest of Constantinople, and the invasion of the Mongols, which more perverse as the barbarians. But who are the barbarians? Eventually, barbarians are those guys that has related something with the Yafetic tribes, which is the barbarian that was mean in this context. And these guys are nomadic tribes, like these all, that eventually came to a lot of dudes, like the Timors, and then the Ottoman Empire, and the Mughal Empire. So yeah, it's a big family. But if you want to start all the barbarians that came to the Middle East, let's start with this guy, the Seljuk Empire, or Seljuk of Rum. It all starts from this particular dude, this particular land, particular calipats named the Abbasid Calipats. One day, the Abbasid, the Abbasid Calipats got some news about barbarians raiding some places and looking for lands from some Muslim refugees. So they have some meetings. Hey, you guys are quite tough and scary. How about I give you land in Anatolia and by that, protect us from other barbarians. Selja granted the wish. And from this particular land, they learned a lot of stuff. They converted to Islam. Learned a lot of stuff in Baghdad. And sometimes, make kids from the locals. However, he live in a good life. There's someone that he must to warring with. Byzantium. This country is paranoid by Muslims that coming to their territory is because, well, there's already a lot of chaos happening to their place. There's more chaos and civil wars. And then now there are these weird bluish dudes. Oh, he must get these dudes out from Anatolia. Hey, you! Where are you from? You have no place in this Byzantine Empire. Get out of here! Dude, I'm not a rat that you can just push out of here. I'm put in here. This is my destiny. <gasps> treason. No, you treason. <laughs> and up to war they go. They eventually meet in the Battle of Manzikert. But they lose. They run away. And Romanus Diogenes was catch. And Romanus Diogenes was, well, in a shame. It's because he was going back to Constantinople. Well, the guards of, is of these weird barbarians with their flags. Just like a curse, everyone kicked Romanus Diogenes out from the place. It's because he is shamingly shamed. And they pick a new king. But Byzantium talked to the Pope that these guys are so mean. The Pope goes on to skid mode so the pope get his colleagues spreading some propagandas and that's it. <coughs> the crusade has just started so we can say the Man the battle of the manzikert started and triggered the crusades which a lot of blood and a lot of people will dead Which, on a contrast, this war was started 
over this dude and this dude. To defend their territory, they will just yes the battle. And the battle starts. So the war was chaotic like this. And then the hospitalers took Jerusalem and turned it as its own thing. But and then it was returned by Salahuddin al Ayyubi. Or the West will call him as Saladin instead. So yeah, they must uh, do something fast and coexist for a minute. Well, they must have done this fast because someone is coming. In the region of Khorasan, there's a, con there's a country named Khwarezmian Empire. And then he was invaded by someone that was actually right now was between Russia and China. The Mongols. Brutal fighting happened all over the region. Until he must have fled to another place. And the prince was never found. In this cycle, the Mongols will defeat the Russians and the other kingdoms. He even reached the Hungaries in which battle in some quick attacks and long battles. Even in front and they even in the front of the city of Vienna that time. That must be par paranoid. The Hungarians must be paranoid by this. But and then there's something happened with their royal, royal families. So they come back. And then they come back again and attack the Abbasids. Kill the Abbasids and burn down Baghdad. And then he come to interrupt the Crusades. Defeating the Ayyubibs and their hospitalers. Burning Aleppo, Homs and Damascus and Damascus at the process. And then an uprising happened in the Ayyubib's side. So they must to flee to to Levant. But then the, the Mongols used this opportunity and burned them off. And then defeating the hospitalers many many times until these guys are trauma and then flee. And then the Mongols think to prank their fellas. Hmm, let's see what kind of strategy we can use next. Ambushing, really and really. Hello, Seljuk. Hi, you have any strategies? Uh, not yet, sir. You set off my- Oh my god! Who are you? You're not me! Or anyone! Well... Well, I'm the Mongols. Wait, how you get all over here? No, 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 no! This is why I moved from there! And it turns out you're chasing me! I'm not come for you, I'm came here for a manifest destiny, conquering the world. Oh, shut up, you. So they go on a war between barbarians and barbarians. Um, let's see, however, however, the Seljuks were defeated in that time, which weakened the Seljuks, which make Byzantine freaked out. I wonder how fun seeing the battle. And then the, and then the Byzantine sent an ultimatum to the Mongols. But of course, you can't send an ultimatum to a barbarian, you stupid! However, the Mongols go on to kill. They briefly met each other and give him a slap. So he calmed down. So he come back to Levant and conquer even more cities and burn them down. And then there's a new sultanate here. A baby sultanate, we can say. The Mamluks. They heard of everything, what just happened, and see that these Mongols look like they're going after them. The Mamluks being the last hope for it all to help the Islam utopia to come back and a hope for the world. Wait, how about Seljuk? Seljuk was weakened that time. Whatever is happening, the Mongols send an ultimatum to the Mamluks. But the Mamluks are going to kill. When they're on a trip to go in some, in going some in the field and hope to see these guys. Munka Khan die. So Hulagu Khan must have come back. So now Kid Buka was in charge. They eventually meet in the Battle of Angel Loot. And spoiler alert, the Mamluk won. At the first part of the battle, the some parts of the Mamluks are going right to meet the 
Mongols. And doing something like, hey guys, I ride over here, catch me if you can. Because thinking that was the whole army the Mamluks can make, they do on the charge. So a quick skirmish happened, and then the Mamluks doing some trick like he was retreating. Oh guys, look, I'm retreating, bye. Get them all, you kids. About something like that. And turns out that's a trap. It's because the Mamluks bringing another army. So the so the Mongols set the arms up and charge. The Mamluks also doing some a little charge and meet each other. However, they put a lot of pressure. The Mamluks are not demoralized by this and keep on defending. And they're strong enough though. But and then this has happened. The left flank was weakened, and then it was pushed. So the rest, so the minorities took and get that armies, and even surround them. So they circle up the Mongols, and see that these guys are circled. There, bang bang bang, the Mongols are on the run. So Kidbuka charged back to the enemy's lines. But and then the army was defeated. Then Kitbuka was brought and then was executed. So yeah, that was a complete disaster. And from that, the Mongols can't expand again. But and then something happened that made this dude explode. They exploded to be the age of four kingdoms. It's three kingdoms but plus one, okay? Eventually, the Mongols are still alive, though. The Mongols were converted into a Yuan dynasty in Ch of China. The other one will be the Al Khanid of Chagatai. The other one will be Al Khanid, and the other one will be Jochi. Eventually, these two countries will become con will become Muslim countries, like him. But before these guys are becoming Muslims, these guys are battling each other. Eventually the Jochi one will go is becoming the Islam one first. That's why I have to be battling with the Ilkhanites. But whatever it happens, the Jochi always won. He has was the first one to become Islam. They spread Islam utopia in the place of Russia's and others. Come on guys, just come to be Islam and you will be okay. And if you're not, I'm not gonna hurt you. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, right, just try that, Jochi. Oh, come on, just... <laughs> Uncool, man. The Chakaday one was once one to invade the India, but was repelled by the Delhis. Which left a settlement of Mamluks. No, not Mamluks, I mean Mughals. Then Al Khanid become Muslim, and then these Mamluks and the Al Khanids just watching each other. Until up the war they go. Battling each other in the Battle of Home and other places. Eventually, they decided to like, you know what, let's have peace. Okay. So they have peace. From edge here until edge here, there's nothing but barbarians. And then an uprising was happening. The Timurids. So the Ilkhanids come there and try to defeat them up. Which what happened to Jochi is the Russians came to them and then burned him off. Just like that. Jakatai also somehow collapsed in some things. But the Mughals continued the legacy. And battling against the Delhis. Since what happened in here now is many Baliks, independent Baliks, came out and be declaring themselves of their own things. Oh, poor subjects. One of them is the Ottoman Empire, which gobbled up everyone. Which at the same time, the Seljuks died out. However, there are still two Baliks right over here. South right over here. But they will come downfall after many years later. And then the Ottomans make some set first settlement in the Europe in 1352. 
and started a campaign to conquer Constantinople. What happened right over here is more tragic. The Elkanids were defeated, and so now, the supreme power of Iran is the Timurs. Timur invaded India, battling against the Mamluks, battling the Dulkader and Ramazanids, and defeating the Ottomans in the Battle of Ankara, and catch the king, which is Bayezid I. But eventually, Ottoman is still stand up in its feet and battling against the Byzantines until it conquers Constantinople. Yay. Yeah. Good ending. And then what happened in Timur is he tried to invade China, but Timur died. So they come back. And then this has happened. Revolts of the Shias. But eventually, they defeated pretty easily. And then there's a thing called at the Akyunglu, but I don't know the flag looks like, so I'm just gonna put Timur right over here. The, Akung, the Akyunglu eventually tar, tried to get the Ottomans' precious territories. So they meet in the Battle of At Outlook Valley, and the Akyunglu were defeated. And then a revolt happened again. How many times I have to say to you, you must to stand back. And anyways, there are no 12 Imams that came after Muhammad. So stay down and come back to our religion. How many times I have to say to you, you guys are nothing but poo poo heads. Get out of this place and I will take your territory. No, you must just stay back. <gasps> treason! Treason! And some internal wars happen, which the Safavids are one, which is the new name. And then the Mughals defeated the Delhis and change and become the new apex predators of India. So now here is the new roughs of the map. There are many conflicts happened from the Crusades until the opening of the Renaissance. So yeah, that's the history of the barbarians. However, it's full of wars and blood spillings. We must remember the legacy the memories that they make from the Ottomans, from the Indias, from the Middle East, Europe, and the Middle East. These guys shaped the world, which is from their own hands or from their descendants' hands. And go down in history, we must have put a big check right over there. And because of the blood spilling? Yeah, all because of the blood spillings.